Um, my name's Steph Bo. I'm 19 years old. Uh, I'm a novelist. Uh, I'm the author of, of two novels so far. I think I'll... Kids, this is what my talk's about, to begin with. Um, usually when I'm invited to speak in schools, um, I'll be talking about uh, being a writer or about books. Um, I got my, my first book deal when I was 15, so uh, teachers like to have me in to kind of encourage the young writers. Uh, but, you know, largely uh, reading seems to be still pretty daggy. Uh, so hopefully I, I kind of give you all the impression that reading and writing is cool, even though I'm, I'm totally not a cool person at all. But today I thought I'd talk a bit. There's, look, I am cool. There's me when I'm three. I'm wearing a Triple J t-shirt because I'm a total hipster. And I'm also, I'm also really sun smart. I've got my hat with the, you know, to cover your neck. It's, I'm, I'm just, I'm fantastic. It's a, shame, it's a shame that Steph can't give the speech today because I think she'd be really great. But um, and today I thought I'd talk about uh, how teenagers are portrayed in the media and kind of the attitudes that adults and older people have about teenagers, especially about teenage girls, and how I think that they're totally incorrect and that teenagers are fantastic. Obviously, I think it's because I'm a teenager myself, but uh, let's go to the next. Um, I really like this quote. We live in a decaying age. Young people no longer respect their parents. They are rude and impatient. They frequently inhabit taverns and have no sense of self-control. Apart from uh, taverns, that could easily be something said on a current affair any night of the week. Um, but this is attributed to an inscription in an ancient Egyptian tomb, which I think uh, reminds us of the fact that all throughout history, the young people have always been um, thought of as, you know, misbehaving by the older generation and that obviously binge drinking is not a new problem. Um, I, I went on a cruise last year. This is related to my speech. I'm not just boasting because oh, I went to the Pacific Islands. Um, you know, it was nice. It was different and unusual. When you go on a cruise, you get to meet a lot of older people because, you know, they've retired, so they're off holidaying, having a great time. I'm very jealous. Um, and you have, you have a few long, boring days at sea. So, you know, you get to meet a lot of these retirees and lovely folks. And every time I, I told a retiree that I wrote fiction for young people, they would say something to the effect of, I hope you're promoting good moral values. Today's youth, they're out of control. And, and I would nod my head fervently and go, yes, I am promoting good moral values, absolutely. Um, my, my new novel centres around a teenage girl robbing a bank. So I don't know about the positive moral values. Um, though, quick spoiler, I promise you that crime doesn't pay in the book. I do try and write about characters that are strong individuals rather than gendered stereotypes, though, because I loathe the insipid heroines and abusive vampire boyfriends of a lot of YA fiction. But I think the reason a lot of older people believe teenagers to be universally a disaster zone is that the only information they receive about teenagers displays them in a negative light. Stories about girls binge drinking and partying and being poorly behaved dominate the media, even though they represent only a minority of the population. I guess stories about how well girls are doing in school and about how girls are contributing to their communities won't attract viewers like a sensational story about the stereotypical obnoxious teenager being off the, rail, off the rails, even if you know, they're much easier to find. I find that child psychologists are often writing books about raising teenage girls give them these unpleasant titles like Princess Nasty, or I don't know exactly, but it's, it's like, don't you want to help girls? I, I think that adults seem to quickly forget what they were like in their youth, and probably in 40 years' time, we'll all be talking about how well-behaved Generations Y and Z were and complaining about their grandkids and their blasted devil music. Uh, but I think, I think adults, it's, it's easy to forget with time what they were like in their youth, uh, their mistakes, their curiosity. Uh, their desire to figure out who they are and where they belong. Um, I think if we genuinely, as a society, care about our young people, which I'm, I'm sure all of the teachers in this room do, um, and I'm sure parents do as well, we shouldn't be demonising them in the press or blaming them. I think we should be tackling drinking culture in Australia and improving mental health services and integrating critical thought about media messages into the curriculum. I don't think uh, moral panic about girls fighting achieves anything. Uh, adults are always talking about how arrogant teenagers are, but I think that this is natural and something everyone has experienced. And it's pretty much unavoidable since we as a species are really arrogant and self-obsessed. I mean, we think we're the only intelligent life on the planet. Um, 
And I think as much as being a teenager, it can be wonderful, though not quite as carefree as adults uh, seem to believe. Uh, it can be a strange and tricky time, trying to figure out where you belong, who you are and what you want in life, in the face of a lot of pressure and expectations. I think the fact that teenagers are constantly told that young people are obnoxious uh, turns it into a sort of self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, everyone um, behaving like Jemay out of, uh, what is it, Summer Heights High. Uh, I, I don't think that the majority of teenage girls are like that, but I think we all have a point at which we are Jemay. Um, um, it's time for me to go on to my next slide. I love clickers, they're fantastic. Um, I, I thought I'd put up these two pictures on the left here. We have uh, Beatles, please stay here forever. We've got some sort of Beatle crazed girls. My grandmother, when the Beatles came to Australia, was one of the girls screaming and fainting. Um, and on the right, we've got much more recently some One Direction fans who are also very enthusiastic. Um, I don't tend to scream and faint for One Direction, but uh, you know, if you like them, that's okay. Uh, and I, I think I'm, I, I, I thought I'd show this because it highlights the fact that and nothing ever really changes, you know. Everyone's still sort of panicking over teenage girls being mad. And the way that, that teenagers are, are perceived hasn't really changed. Uh, I think it's really unfortunate that sort of uh, they're judged for having enthusiasm. And a lot of the way that, that teenagers are treated in the media is that everything is about teenagers and about teenage girls. And there isn't really much of receiving the opinions of teenage girls and teenage girls being um, featured. Uh, I was invited on to Weekend Sunrise um, last weekend. Uh, they did a live cross to the Gold Coast, which was very exciting. And uh, they had a, a child psychologist in the uh, Sydney office talking about all of the terrible things that are happening with teenagers. And I only got asked one question, which I was really disappointed because I had really good answers. But um, I, I thought it was really unfortunate that there's such a, a lot of focus on what adults are saying about teenagers and not a lot being heard from teenagers. I think it's important that uh, teenage girls and, and young people, instead of being constantly told that they're arrogant and they have no respect, people need, young people need to be told that their opinions have worth and that what they think is not by default less meaningful because of their youth. Uh, as a writer, there's this whole uh, attitude from older people that says, you know, you can't write if you're young or you don't have uh, you, you don't have enough life experience to be able to write anything meaningful, um, which I think, while life experience can help you in, in writing and in learning about the world, and absolutely, um, you know, you can't be too arrogant when you're young because you will learn a lot throughout your life. I think it's important for respect to go both ways, and I think it's important for us to listen to uh, the, the opinions and the writings of young people. I think writing is a wonderful way uh, to express yourself, and I think if you want to be a writer as an adult, not writing as a teenager because you need to gather life experiences is a very poor idea. I think writing should be something that you do because you love it. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, I love this. I was going to put a bunch of ads on this slide, but then I thought you see ads so often that you're totally, uh, it, it just becomes, uh, there's no real power in individual ads anymore. It's just this constant noise. Everywhere you look, there's an advertisement. It becomes very ingrained. Um, I think this ad from the middle of last century is especially interesting uh, because it highlights the fact that the desirable, sexy ideal that advertisers construct is just that, a construction. Uh, I guess it's easy enough to put on weight now with Maccas and all, uh, that more money can be made out of weight loss and so thinness is equated with beauty. Um, very unfortunately, girls are often told they must conform to these arbitrary beauty ideals if they're to have worth uh, by advertising by the media. And that's sexism, pure and simple. Uh, advertising relies on you feeling bad about yourself. Advertising wants you to feel bad about yourself. And that's terrible. Uh, I think this ad demonstrates that that isn't a new thing. Ask for amazing weight on. It's sort of retro, I love it. Um, advertising tries to fool us all into thinking that we can make ourselves whole and beautiful and give meaning to our lives and belong and be loved if only we buy the right things. I think if girls are caught up in hating their bodies and their appearance, on wasting energy in the pursuit of thinness, on spending their money on Kim Kardashian weight loss shakes and magical tea, uh, we're distracted from the things that really matter. We're distracted from creating genuine meaning in our lives and contributing to our communities. And I think the tide is changing a bit. I think girls are much more likely to be taught to be critical of advertising in the media they consume. 
I think that educators are realising how important self-esteem is if girls are going to reach their full potential. Unfortunately, advertising will never tell you to be content with your body and yourself, unless it's Dove, who I think are working some kind of weird reverse psychology with their ads. Um, and moving on. Don't let them pull you skinny. It's just hilarious. Um, so on the one hand, you have the media shouting at you about how out of control teenage girls are. Look at their short skirts, terrible. And then on the other hand, you have advertising saying, you should be hot, you should be beautiful. If you buy this lipstick and drink these weight loss shakes and wear this short skirt, your life will be wonderful. You'll be noticed by boys. And then there's like a third hand, I didn't think this through, um, where your parents and your teachers expect a lot of you. You must do well at school so you can get into this uni, so you can have this career. And it's difficult and it's overwhelming having all of this noise and all of these opinions being forced on you. And despite all of the media coverage of what nightmares teenage girls are, I think the majority of us are doing well in the face of all this. I think it's important to have respect for your parents and their wishes, but as you get older it's important you make choices to create a life that's most fulfilling for you. Um, as a writer, I've heard for years that books are dying and there's no money in them. And everyone's always very discouraging about, about writing and you know, about lots of fields. You know, don't, don't try going into journalism because that's you know, on the way out. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to have a family that supported my dreams and I was able to start a career doing what I love. I think it's really important to, to, if you don't have a supportive family, having a supportive group of friends, having supportive teachers, just having a supportive voice in your life so that you don't get overwhelmed by discouragement from people in pursuing your dreams. Because generally, if you, if you have a dream and it's you know, sort of wildly out there, there's a lot of people who'll tell you not to pursue it. You need to stick with the people who'll tell you you can do it. Um, I think I'm up to my final slide. This is good, I'm not going to go over time. Here we go. Best generation ever. I put a question mark at the end because I didn't want to seem too arrogant because it's my generation. Um, and obviously because a lot of the great stuff that we're going to do is ahead of us, which is very exciting. Um, uh, you know, girls are doing better at school and are more highly educated than ever before. Human beings are much more aware of our impact on the earth and much more environmentally thoughtful. Um, and when I say our capacity for amazing things, I'm not just talking about big deal things like you know, Jessica Watson sailing around the world or the 15-year-old American who recently discovered a new and brilliantly effective diagnostic process for pancreatic cancer or getting a book deal at 15. I think that even everyday things like contributing to your, to your community and doing well in school and uh, being a kind and thoughtful citizen of the earth uh, is wonderful. And I think that we're more thoughtful than ever. Uh, and irrespective of your political beliefs, uh, having a woman as Prime Minister is amazing. And I think it's great that a generation are being raised that see intelligent, successful women in positions of power as a normal occurrence. Um, we're progressing towards a much more egalitarian Australia and I think that um, this generation, later generations, it, we're huge proponents for social change and much more equality and that's a wonderful thing. And I didn't write an excellent ending sentence to my speech because I was trying to come up with something on the way over here and it's just, I was, there was no sort of spark of genius. So I, I just want to say, you know, teenagers are fantastic um, and all of the problems that everyone's always on about how teenagers are stumbling drunkenly in the streets, I think they're blown out of proportion, but I also think that uh, adults and the community should be working to help teenagers rather than demonise them. And you know, your opinions, your writing, your thoughts have worth and meaning and you know, you're going to do great things. I mean, God, you have a fantastic school hall. How could you not do great things? Uh, thank you very much for having me.